come back to class uh, in our in our last class uh, which is our chapter one uh, we took us on a um, introduction to task audit and uh, investigation uh, like I mentioned um, in the chapter one part one that uh, this course is all about uh, task audit and investigation practice okay so what you need to know um, while what 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 you need to know in task audit and uh, in task investigation so because uh, I haven't gone through these uh, uh, institute examination and uh, you qualify to be a shattered taxation uh, a shattered task practitioner okay so you are or you may you may you may be called upon by the uh, by the internal revenue service be it at the federal level or local or state to 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 engage you in a task audit or task investigation and you can be a task auditor or task investigation without having a prerequisite knowledge of uh, audit and uh, investigation in our uh, particular to task okay particular to transition now um, in this course has been designed to cover the audit of all variables in the income uh, statements balance sheets cash in short all financial statements okay because that's what uh, is, is an audit evidence for um, for who for the task uh, authority okay is an evidence it, it's a document for what for task authority to 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 on, on which they base their what they base their, or their opinion or their judgments okay so on which a, a, a decision is formed that oh this task payer has been complying or not okay because when they pick up a financial statement they look at the um, history of the task payer okay how has the task payer been complying okay like they have a uh, five years of uh, financial statements they look at the year one year two year three year four two year five that was what we call that trend analysis when we get there we, we do that that was another course at this level we call that our uh, task and uh, financial analysis okay so now in that case what they do is that oh this uh, particular task payer has not been complying over the years okay so year one non compliance year two non compliance year three non compliance year four non compliance so and year five also shows no compliance so then a, a, a dex audit to be carried out by the tax authority and a, 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 a letter will be sent to the taxpayer that they are coming for a feed audit okay they are coming for they are coming for a feed audit so now this chapter 2 particularly is we will we, be, we'll be talking on the, the practical aspect of tax audit okay so we'll be talking of practical aspect of what practical aspect of tax audit while we take uh, we took us on the uh, introduction to audit and investigation in chapter one where we discuss the main objective of audit and investigation merit and demerits of auditing and investigation qualities of an auditor and investigator fundamental principles of uh, auditing okay fundamental principles of auditing concept of expectation gap in auditing okay let me put that in writing in our last class in our last class which is chapter one of this uh, course we take us on a introduction introduction to audit and uh, investigation okay Introduction to audit and investigation. So where we take our uh, meaning and uh, objectives, meaning and objectives of auditing and what auditing and investigation. We discuss our uh, merits and demerits of what of audit and uh, investigation, and also we discuss qualities of an auditor and investigation okay investigator and also we discuss uh, the fundamental principles of auditing 
what are the fundamental principles of it. I know by now you will know what the fundamental principles of auditing are, just like um, for accountants, okay? So also it's applicable for, the, it's applicable to tax auditor as well. So then also we discuss a uh, concept of expectation gap in auditing, concept of expectation gap in auditing and as well we discuss our differentiation differentiation between a task auditor or the differentiation between task audits and statutory statutory audit when you say statutory audit there's a audit of uh, financial statements which is made compulsory by uh, regulate uh, by relevant regulate regulatory body such as the uh, Kama and uh, Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria and the likes. So also we discuss a differentiation differentiation between the internal auditor differentiation between the internal auditor external auditor so external auditor is being referred to as a statutory auditor external auditor and the task auditor okay so now uh, in this chapter two we'll be looking at task audit and investigation uh, principles again task audit and investigation uh, principles or you say task audit or investigation uh, principles yeah under task audit and inv or investigation principles we'll be taking definition nature and purpose of task audit or investigation in which we will discuss uh, an audit of uh, task of uh, in overview overview of task audits and uh, classification and types of audits also, we'll be taking rules and objectives of task audit or investigation where we will discuss legal framework for task audit and task audit fundamentals. And also, we'll be looking at difference between a task audit and a task investigation in which we will discuss the issue of forensic audit, legal issues, and the role of task auditor. And also, under our uh, Task audit or investigation principles. We'll be looking at reasons for task audit and task uh, investigation. Why are we doing task audit and uh, task investigation? So, uh, under this uh, subtopic, we'll be looking at factors for selecting task payer for task audit investigation. Like I mentioned earlier, that non compliance is one of the reasons why uh, task audit is what. Is being carried out by the task uh, 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 authority. Okay, so and also we'll be looking at the uh, qualities of a good task audit and task uh, investigation uh, exercise. The qualities of a good task audit and task uh, investigation exercise. So this could be uh, advantage or merit as well. Okay, so now we'll also be looking at appointment of task auditor. Who appoints a task auditor? And how, uh, how, uh, how a task auditor is being what is being uh, appointed. Then also we'll be taking duties, rights, and obligations of the task and auditors, and the taxpayers' rights and obligation. So mind you, uh, appointment of task auditors or duties and rights of task auditor is also similar to appointment of a, a of an auditor. And the duties of an auditor's rights and obligations of a, an auditor because there is no difference between a task auditor and a statutory auditor. The only difference is that uh, one is subject to taxation, and why the other is subject to what to a financial statement at large. Okay, so is subject to what is subject to financial statement at large because a uh, task is just an aspect. Okay, it's just an aspect of the financial statement, or uh, is is one of the purpose of which a financial statement is being prepared. Okay, so so uh, while uh, uh, an audited financial statement might be used for other 
or um, for other purposes, TARS is one of the reasons why uh, a financial statement is being uh, audited. So we also have a taxpayer's right and obligation and professional responsibility. What are the responsibility of a task auditor? Okay, and uh, under that we'll be taking competencies and ethics of audit staff and task auditors uh, independence. Okay, so once again, I will uh, urge you to listen attentively while you commence the class in good times and uh, pay uh, pay utmost uh, attention. In short time, we'll be back and we continue from where we stop. Thank you. Goodbye. <music>